I am the Count Federico Vardar. I spend my life on the world stage, but now I am really excited because I have the honor and the pleasure, but uh, the responsibility to speak about one of the most important movie director and cinema writer in the world, the last living pillar of neorealism cinema, Maestro Carlo Lizzani, last maestro of Italian cinema. Hollywood gave uh, to the very young Lizzani an Academy Award nomination for his film Bitter Rise. And now America rediscovers Lizzani through a young Californian movie director, Jason Zavaleta, too. I met uh, Zavaleta during uh, an important world symposium called Academic Impact of the United Nations in New York City. And after I saw his documentary, I told him, you could be the right person to do a film, a documentary film about uh, my friend Carlo Lizzani. We started the project in San Francisco and now we are celebrating the 90th birthday of Lizzani. So now I will speak about uh, an important TV documentary by Paola Faloia Pandolfi. By a pure coincidence, I just found a TV documentary written by Paola Faloia Pandolfi. She, she was Paola. She introduced myself to Maestro Lizzani. The husband of Paola Vito Pandolfi, one of the most important historian of the theater, was close friend of Lizzani. That important generation, the actual Italian president, Giorgio Napolitano, is belonging to a great, great generation. I could be a witness of Lizzani's entourage, mostly thanks to Paola Faloia Pandolfi, who I met through Federico Fellini. Fellini was as my putative father for me. We all remember his giant fantasy, opulent theatricality, immense honorism often connected with the esoterism. An author in Lizzani Lizzani, on the other hand, is immense in simplicity, in the truth of the reality. Two opposite figures. Also, if Fellini, especially by his film I Vitelloni, could embrace the neorealism cinema too. In my life, I meet Fellini and Lizzani, so different personalities. Was sure important this for my balance as a stage protagonist. The TV documentary written by Paola Faloia Pandolfi tell us that the neorealism cinema was not born in 1935, but 20 years before, in the year 1915. This could be a revolution in cinema history. In that TV documentary, entitled Women, 
filmmakers pioneers, the last diva of silent cinema, Francesca Bertini, she is in reproduction here, tell us that the first episode of Neorealism Cinema was through her film Assunta Spina, year 1915. At that time, Francesca Bertini, at the time of Francesca Bertini, the cinema was emphatic, redundant, as the famous film Cabiria in 1914. And Assunta Spina was completely different. She used a sh essential gesture. People took from the street to act. Often the cinema set uh, is in the streets with natural daylight and this uh, reduced a lot the need of uh, captions explain the actions. One year before Francesca Bertini's film on 1914, another Italian actress directed her film in a neorealistic way. She was Elvira Notari. I found, uh, uh, she found Dora Film in America in New York because, and uh, became Dora Film of America. And so, not only Italy, but America too starts to be deeply involved in uh, this revolutionary cinema movement called neorealism. Before to come back to Lizzani, I must tell that my mother was close friend of a relative of Rodolf Valentino. Valentino was one of the biggest pop icon of silent cinema and I remember that uh, my mother told me exactly what Francesca Bertini said. So now I could see, we could see neorealism cinema in more precise way. My life, <laughs> from Fellini to Lizzani, from an extreme to another extreme. I am thinking about how much my life was a stream. And to be precise, I have to say from an extreme to another extreme, as from the redundant Cabiria to the essential Assunta Spina. My look sometimes was exaggerated and sometimes cancelled. So, to come back to Lizzani, seven years before I met Lizzani, I met Federico Fellini. It was the year 70s and my look was absolutely egocentric, spectacular, as a Michael Jackson before his time. Plays Rome, Cinecittà, the glorious film theater. Fifth theater, the impact between Fellini and myself, sorry, Federico myself and Federico Fellini was not exactly in a realistic way or neorealistic way, but the opposite, intense, magical. Eyes into the eyes, spiritualities into spiritualities. Deeply we immediately understood each other perfectly. We knew by our strong intuition and perception that the destiny maybe was involved with us. When I met Lizzani seven years later, my appearance was not surrealistic and the impact with him was in this dimension, simple, real, exactly neorealistic. In Cinecittà Fellini asked me, where is yourself in your look, in your rings or in your head? All the people know that the sarcasm and the irony of Fellini was tremendous. My answer was, 
Maestro, Federico, why do you ask me that if you and I know perfectly the answer? Your look are your films, but yourself is here with me now. And outside the door, there are at least two, three hundred people who are waiting for you. This is a neorealism vision. What do you think? Do you are part of a neorealism? And Fellini. Do you met Lizzani? And I. No, maestro, no yet. Just I saw him with you a minute ago, with Paola Pandolfi. Fellini was a little bit surprised that uh, doesn't happen usually. <laughs> and I, maestro, do you know what happened outside the door? First Paola arrived, and immediately we became friends. And after that, Lizzani arrived, and directly saw you without to pay any attention to me, of course. You paid attention to me. And you know, and I know, I will work with you. Lizzani, sure, I will meet him, but after you. These are our circumstances. This may be the destiny he wants. In Fellini, you don't need to work with me. You already made my film. Not bad as a beating, eh? What do you think? After that, for seven years I didn't see Paula. But when I saw her again, fortunately, seven years later, she gave an important reception in her majestic penthouse in Via Sistina in Rome, and she introduced myself to Carlo Lizzani, a real gentleman, very humble, calm, an honest person, a true person, in all his manifestations. After a few months from then, I worked as an actor with Carlo in his film Mom Ebe, in Italian Mamma Ebe, in the role of a young priest. It was the first time for me to act a young priest, a priest involved in a dramatic situation, a priest neorealist. Not Fellini style, of course, so very different for me. In that cinema set, thanks to Lizzani, the atmosphere was perfect, and so no problem to immerse myself in Don Franco. This is, was the name of the role. To act Don Franco, I made a invention, a fusion between Stanislavski method and Diderot method, because while you are acting in a neorealism film, a window opened on the reality seeing you. These are words of Carlo Lizzani, or my interpretation. Anyway, Carlo was satisfied by my acting and everything will be okay. I am the inventor of a, a method to act based on extrasensorial perception called Vardal's extrasensorial method. And if uh, in the case of Fellini I used my method to act, in the case of, Fel of Lizzani, in the specific role of Don Franco, as I said, exceptionally, I preferred the extraordinary formula Stanislavski Diderot to opposite method to act together. What I think about Lizzani, I could repeat the sentence, while you are acting in a realism film, a window opened on the reality seeing you. 
This could explain Lizzani's thought. Never you are isolated in the world, you are part of the reality all the time. Reality that ever changing, even when you are not able to see any change. Anyway, even by a simple title of the neorealism cinema, Children are watching us by Vittorio De Sica, you can understand this. Children often, for us, are like uh, the reality outside the door, not belong to our world, but they watching us inside ourselves. Neorealism influenced all cinema. The sequence shot was the main way of filming in neorealism. In 1948, uh, Alfred Hitchcock, uh, through his, this invention, created uh, his extraordinary film Rope. And I was protagonist acting in a sequence shot of eight minutes on 2011 in the art film Rise City written and directed by the young uh, Egyptian movie director Sherif El Asma, Rai Sidi is now in uh, Pacific Film Archive of Berkeley. Forever neorealism influenced all cinema and uh, my way of acting too. I just asked uh, by a telephone call to Lizzani about writers close to him. He mentioned Alberto Moravia, Vasco Pratolini, and even the, at that time, younger Pierpaolo Pasolini. I only met Moravia several times, but I know Pratolini and Pasolini through common friends. I read their books and a lot of memories came in, in my mind, a lot of stories. Lizzani and I, I we spoke also about Scorsese, George Lucas, Coppola, other important stories came in my mind. The stories of neorealism was focused on simple, real people living in dramatic situations. Three, four hundred million of people saw neorealism cinema telling us the Second World War and expressing this concept of equality, freedom, justice, human rights for this reason. In the film project about Lizzani and with Lizzani called Last Maestro by Jason Zavaleta could be included a scene of my human rights drama dedicated to Lizzani. A lot I can add, but I don't want that Jason Zavaleta as Fellini can tell me, you already made my film. 